Hello everyone. In today's session, we will be discussing about fuel cells. And under the topic fuel cells, we will be discussing about solid oxide fuel cells. The outcomes of the discussion could be listed as follows. After the discussion, the student would be able to define the term fuel cell, describe the features of solid oxide fuel cells, draw a schematic representation of the same, explain the construction and working of solid oxide fuel cells, write the reactions involved in the fuel cell working, list the advantages and limitations of solid oxide fuel cell usage, also would be able to cite the applications of solid oxide fuel cells. Let us now start with the introduction for SOFCs. In order to have the continuity, let us now define the fuel cell which we have already seen in the last session. So any fuel cell is considered to be a galvanic cell where chemical energy is converted directly to electrical energy. The system would be always accompanied with the electrochemical process that is an oxidation and a reduction. We must supply the fuel at anode and an oxidant usually the oxygen is supplied at the cathode. Another point to be remembered is most of the fuel cells are named after the fuel which is used or sometimes the electrolytes which is used. So here solid oxide fuel cell is named after the reason that we go for the usage of solid oxides for electrode as well as the electrolyte construction. Let us see some general feature, features of solid oxide fuel cells. They are in short called as SOFCs and here onwards I will be using the terminology SOFC wherever solid oxide fuel cells must be used. One of the important feature and salient feature of SOFC is it is actually made up of a very hard and stable ceramic compound and these compound is developed from a metal oxide and it is used as an electrolyte. Some examples could be calcium and zirconium whose oxide is taken as an electrolyte. The SOFC arrangement consists of some stacks in order to have more power output and each stack will be having many unit cells. Each unit cell in turn will be viewed as a having two electrodes and these electrodes are highly porous and there will be presence of a solid electrolyte. Added on, it has been found that the SOFC efficiency is about 60%. It is considerably good efficiency among the fuel cells developed. A unique feature of SOFC is the operating temperature is found between 600 to 1000 degree Celsius. Almost most of the SOFCs work at the temperature order of 1000 degree Celsius. And so they are considered to be the third generation fuel cells. Usually the phosphoric acid fuel cell developed in the beginning is considered as first generation. Polymer electrolyte membrane kind are second generation and SOFCs are considered to be the third generation and modern kind of fuel cells. There is a very advantage with the SOFC is there is no reformer required for the fuel cell to be constructed. Usually a reformer is constructed so as to extract hydrogen from the fuel. Usually we supply hydrocarbon fuel from where we require hydrogen for the burning to happen. So we may have to go for a special arrangement of reformer which may not require with the SOFCs. That is because already operating temperature is so high so that the extraction of hydrogen would be quite easy. Two possibilities of SOFCs are by construction as planar and tubular SOFCs. In order to have some idea, I have placed here two pictures of planar and tubular SOFCs. As a diagram itself, you can understand 
planar SOFCs will be having uh, laminar structures where tubular they are connected like a spherical structures. Each cell is a repeating unit which consists of an anode and electrolyte and a cathode and there will be some connecting material which are also made up of metal oxides. Now let us have a deeper insight for the construction of a SOFC. Unlike the fuel cells which you have studied with the lower class or methanol oxygen fuel cell, here the anode, cathode and electrolyte are made up of the metal oxides. The anode is usually made up of a highly porous material that is nickel zirconia cermet. In place of nickel, cobalt also can be used. So, I have given both porous nickel zirconia cermet or cobalt on zirconium oxide. A cermet may be a new word. So, it is nothing but a material which is highly strong. It is temperature resistant because when we deal with the temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius, the anode material must be having the capacity to sustain. So, that particular material, I mean cermet, is a material made up of ceramic and metal. The combined word is cermet. Okay. The next material used for the construction of cathode is lanthanum manganite. It is LaMnO3. The material must be having very good oxygen reducing property. As near the cathode, we supply oxygen which must undergo reduction to give O2 minus. A material must be chosen in such a way that oxygen must be easily reduced. So, strontium can be doped to lanthanum manganite in order to have a better working. And electrolyte as name itself is suggesting is made up of zirconium oxide or calcium oxide doped with atria or atrium oxide Y2O3. Famously, this electrolyte is known as YSZ electrolyte that is atria stabilized zirconia. If you see the three important component anode, cathode and electrolyte all are made up of solid materials plus oxides and hence the name of the fuel cell solid oxide fuel cell. The two other important aspect to be remembered is the fuel used for SOFC. So, here we go for the supply of hydrogen and carbon monoxide as a fuel and oxidant as usual the oxygen gas. This picture shows the schematic representation of a SOFC where fuel is sent from the anode compartment. Excess fuel that is hydrogen and carbon monoxide along with the formation of water molecules would be drained out. And near the cathode compartment oxygen is supplied. From anode electrode electrons would be migrating to cathode and this will make oxygen to reduce. And see here I told electrolyte must be having the capacity to send O2 minus via the electrolyte we have kept. So O2 minus can migrate from cathodic compartment to anodic compartment here as shown in the diagram. The unused gases will be drained out near the cathode compartment. Now let us go for the reactions involved. Though the construction looks little bit different, the reactions involved in SOFCs are very simple and primary reactions. So at the cathode, oxygen is supplied which undergoes reduction to give O2- that is oxygen anion is created. The produced O2- look at the diagram O2 that is coming up from right hand side top would be reduced to O2- charge would migrate towards the anode. Now come back to the equation. So here the O2- produced would combine with the hydrogen and carbon monoxide. They are the fuels to give water and carbon dioxide. So we have two reactions happening at anode surface and a overall reaction. The overall reaction is again 
very simple that is hydrogen and carbon monoxide getting oxidized to give water molecules and carbon dioxide along with that lot amount of electric energy is taken out and heat also will be lost this is the pictorial representation which shows all the points which we have discussed so far please have a closer look so here the cathode is ma made up of lanthanum manganite lamno3 and anode is nickel zirconia cermet why is sz electrolyte use, used and operating temperature is shown as 1000 degree celsius the reaction at anode and cathode are also represented here where the products carbon dioxide and water expelling out at one side and excess air leaving at another side is also shown further movement of electrons from anode to cathode where we take the power output is also shown as a circuit remember one point here the electrolyte being a solid must be having the capacity to conduct the oxide ion so it is shown as o2 minus moving from cathode to anode compartment moving ahead let us list some advantages and limitations of the system as like any other technology here also we can locate some advantages as well as disadvantages the very salient and striking factor with SOFC is it is considered to have a high combined heat and power efficiency as 1000 degree Celsius is the operating temperature there will be lot of heat loss as well as lot of power output also it is known to be having a very very long term stability that is because metal oxides and cermet materials are used they are quite stronger so they can have long term stability if you see the products it's carbon dioxide and water which are almost considered to be no harmful condition so it is considered as low emission or negligible emission of harmful products unlike other fuel cells here electrolyte used is a solid so no corrosion of the parts can takes place as far as electrolyte is concerned if we see the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell or methanol oxygen fuel cell wherein we have to use a very expensive catalyst like platinum now here since we use very inexpensive materials it is considered to be having low cost then additionally lot of waste heater is generated which can also be recycled to make additional electricity which is the which is found only with the SOFCs however very few limitations are also found with the SOFCs one important is the temperature itself I mean to say in order to have a startup to reach a thousand degrees Celsius one have to take up a longer startup time and then maintaining such high temperature is also one task and the issue is the mechanical and chemical compatibility issue of the materials in the sense the material what we use over a long period of time must be stable at elevated temperature as we proceed we must not have a issue that is a mechanical degradation of the materials used or else the chemicals used should not undergo any kind of transformations because of the heat then it is as it is a third generation fuel cell it is involving some complex fabrications which is also one of the limitation of SOFCs like compared to simple SOFCs we have studied sorry simple fuel cells we have studied let us go to the last part of the discussion that is about applications as too high power output could be obtained by SOFCs the prime application is in the railway locomotives then it could be also used for the ships or automobiles or vehicles for the power production and it is considered as one of the promising area where electric power is supplied to industrial as well as residential 
area. So in this discussion we have seen an introduction to fuel cell, some salient features of solid oxide fuel cells, construction and working of a fuel cell, electrode, electrolyte and the materials used, some advantages and disadvantages with the applications. Thank you.